Black Power, greetings. This is day seven of the prison strike. It's going all across the country, and of course, it's even taking place in Canada. Brothers and sisters who are incarcerated, being held captive, or engaged in work stoppages, they are engaged in hunger strikes, they are refusing uh, visitation, they are refusing uh, to go see the doctor. But they are fighting on multiple levels, demanding everything from an end to prison and slavery. We have a lot of people lost in prison. Uh, demands of better conditions for those who are being held captive. So, you know, the call has been put out for support from the masses on the outside. So, you know, whether you yourself have been incarcerated, you know, either in the county jail or the state prisons, or if you got loved ones who are incarcerated, or if you just understand what's happening, that today we have more of our family who has been criminalized, kidnapped, and enslaved on these plantations than we had ancestors on the slave plantations. But we need um, everyone, you know, the hashtag prison strike, share information about it, but most definitely boycott, abstain from patronizing these businesses that exploit prison labor. And that's everything from Walmart to McDonald's to Sprint to Whole Foods to um, I'm including a link that lists about 13 different corporations that actually profit off of prison labor. So please go over that. There's about two weeks left. So go ahead and support by staying out of these businesses for another couple weeks. And you can even, you know, put out information saying that you stand out of these businesses because they are connected to the prison industrial complex. And, you know, communicate to your loved ones who are incarcerated. Because, again, it's a lot of them. And that's more than, you know, get engaged. It will definitely have a strong effect. I'm also including a link to a video that a brother named Darren, excuse me, Dion Anderson put out a few days ago. He's basically sharing information about his case and how he's been incarcerated for about 20 years or more. And he's saying he's innocent. And listen to the brother break his case down, all the information he shares is similar to a lot of people who are falsely in prison we've been advocating for our brother Faison you know we got another comrade brother Sibo who are um, falsely incarcerated you know young six but it's too regular of a situation where you know our people criminalized falsely in, in prison political prisoners but on the opposite end you know we see these police shooting our people down daily and getting away with it. We see more and more white folks boldly coming out and, and committing crimes against the black nation. So please um, look into that and do your part to support. Um, you know, check out the video by the brother Deion Anderson. And you can support him and do that. We also have a few of our um, comrades brothers and sisters in court right now. Kevin and Dino are fighting the case stemming from the second day of the grand closing at Hubers almost a year ago. So they are still going to court fighting that. And again, a lot of y'all say what y'all would have would have done or what should have happened in certain situations. But as we keep sharing y'all, you know, it's consequences for actually doing this shit. So I mean, if y'all can't even step up and, and help brothers and sisters fighting their cases, you know, that's one of the safest positions you could be in and, and actually um, help make a difference, you know, help, um, with some legal fees. Because right now, too many brothers and sisters are still dependent on um, public pretenders to fight their cases or to, um, you know, try to get cast to take plea bargains. So, any area you can assist with that is most definitely needed. We also got our comrade brother, King Solomon, who was attacked last week. Some of you might have seen the video. The police rolled up on him while he was already parked on private property at a strip mall. 
and shot his windows out with a pellet gun and then dragged him out of his vehicle and drove off with his vehicle basically just to turn around and release him you know uh, feloniously charging him with obstruction of justice you know as a counter or attempt to justify you know what they were doing but what justice was being obstructed as he wasn't given any other charge so it just shows the um you know, psychopathic privilege that is given, afforded to the enforcers of their laws. So, um, you know, that's another case you can come forward and help with. We also got our Queen Sister Caramel and our King Brother um, Nas fighting a case where they, uh, Brother Nas was assaulted and jumped by a number of non-blacks and his Queen Caramel came to his defense, but because the police who showed up well, the same race as the people attacking them, the attackers were let free and they are now being charged for basically defending themselves. You know, again, um, part of the unfortunate trick to the game we still have to deal with in 2018, you know, we're being told we can't even defend ourselves without being held criminally liable. So, um, you know, well, we need more y'all to come forward to help with that. Next Monday, the third day of the Africa Town Book Fair, or as they still call it, the Lamert Park Book Fair, we're going to have a Know Your Rights Legal Clinic. We have, um, in conjunction with the Africa Town Coalition, we have the National Lawyers Guild Black and African Peoples Task Force who will be joining us to come out and share their legal expertise to get more. Um, to get people more familiar with the so-called rights you have when you encounter um, the enforcers of, of white nationalist laws. So that is taking place next Monday at the Hot and Cool Cafe. I will include um, the information on this video. We'll also put out more information about it this upcoming week. So if you are free next Monday, where a lot of folks um, acknowledge it's Labor Day, Make sure you come out. It's actually going to be the third day of a, a three-day long festival. Again, the Africa Town Book Fair um, put on by Brother Sika and others in the um, Africa Town Merchants. So come on out and support that. We are also still working with other businesses in and around Africa Town to formulate how to um, better present the businesses over there some more you can come out and support them you know those y'all still going out to the Grove going out to Santa Monica again we have a lot of businesses losing right here in the community that need your support and a lot of them have a lot of incredible products there's a lot of high quality services right here in the community so now we're just figuring out how to market package and um, present it better to those of you who go to other communities to consume. I also want to um, thank everyone who has still continued to help support the Break Bread free food program every Sunday. We are right about two years with it now and it's thanks to many of you who have stepped up to help us. You know, um, make sure this happens every week. You know, whether it's, it's um, Donating food, donating, um, uh, I, I forgot what you call it, a little tent, but the, the canopy, um, tables, other things y'all have donated to help us, you know, provide this meal every week. Um, financial contributions, you know, we thank all of you for helping us to um, carry this forward. Also, in the coming weeks, we are going to resume the actions over at USC during their football games as USC is one of the main driving forces behind the gentrification right now. People saying from Jefferson all the way down south to Manchester and from Figueroa all the way back to um, Crenshaw, even La Brea. And some folks even say as far as La Cienega, you know, it's a very aggressive expansion of the Trojan Empire at our cost, you know, at our loss. So we're hoping more of you, you know, whether it's um, those of you up at the Chesapeake 
apartments or other situations that are under attack right now that are being gentrified, whether your rent is being raised beyond what you can afford or you know whether you're finding property in the area no longer affordable. You know, we need y'all to come out and help us um, you know, confront the gentrifiers. And they're out there in the thousands. You know, last year was only a handful of us. So we were only able to make a very small statement. At one point, um, you know, our, our live fees were even being cut off. So but hopefully more of y'all will come out and join us in that this year. Um, we are still collecting signatures to rename Africa Town. So if you have not yet signed the petition, we need you to sign it. If you are in, in Africa Town, we need you to pick up a blank copy and help get your neighbors and other folks signed up so we can go ahead and um, turn that in and see what we're going to get with this situation officially. So, you know, we appreciate everyone. This is an ongoing situation. We are highly under attack and you know, just keeping it 100 with y'all. Pay attention to these so-called new neighbors because as you see, more and more of us are disappearing even faster now. I um, was driving down one of the streets a few nights ago and I saw where they had a live band and the music was up super loud past midnight and they were just parked, you know, blocking people's driveways. And But, you know, again, that's the privilege they exercise when they come into our communities and let us have a birthday party. They calling the police, getting our functions shut down. But even more serious than that, they want your residence. They want to have their TV in your living room. So, you know, stop thinking this whole multicultural agenda has any good or comfortable place for you to exist in it. You know, Dr. King told you um, what he saw about five years into his whole integration campaign. You know, he said it was a, a burning house. So if it was a burning house back in the 60s, you know, here we are 50 years later, y'all. Come on, wake up. Love y'all. Black power. Long live Mac Capone.